Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for being with me here this afternoon. It's my first time in Austin, and what a beautiful place. Thank you. So as Mareta was just sharing, I'm here to talk with you all about a project that I've been working on with my colleagues at MAPS for the past seven years. And it's called the, Psy the Zendo Project for Psychedelic Peer Support. This picture up here is a photo of the space that we use at one of the main events that we do, Burning Man. And this structure is, this main structure here in front is made out of recycled cardboard. It is a 30 foot in diameter yurt and it holds about 20 guests, 20 to 25, we call them our guests. Um, and this the little space in the back is our auxiliary space where we take people who may need a little extra attention. Um, I really like this photo because if you see the sky, there's this really beautiful merging of the light and the darkness. And for me, that's been a really big part of the work that we do at the Zendo is helping to transform and sit with people in some of the darker, more challenging experiences that they may be having on psychedelics and to help bring the things that they're experiencing into the, the healing, uh, the light of healing. So the Zendo Project is a department of MAPS, and we are the, essentially we are the harm reduction arm of the organization. And we provide a supportive environment and space for people who are having challenging psychedelic or just otherwise challenging emotional experiences. We work primarily at festivals and events. And we also do training, outreach, and education to the public and to private uh, organizations in the event saf safety industries, as well as people in the mental health, law enforcement, and security industries, so other people who might be interfacing with people in the public who are taking psychedelics and having uh, all kinds of experiences. We like to say that in the Zendo, there's, I mean, there's many types of experiences that we see, and it ranges the gamut from someone who can come up to us and say, hey, I'm having a bit of a hard time. Can, can I get some help? All the way to naked person running down the street um, in a very heightened, exalted state or a very challenging state. And uh, one of the things that we say is sometimes there's difficult experiences because someone themselves is experiencing difficulty. And sometimes someone might be having the best, most amazing experience of their life, but they're causing people around them difficulty. So <laughs> um, kind of a big spectrum. We really envision a world where our communities are empowered to provide safety and support for each other and those um, having psychedelic experiences and, and or experiencing challenges during those experiences and that harm reduction principles are used to address and to reduce the risks that are associated with substance use. At MAPS, we believe that it is important to have a balanced perspective on psychedelics and as we we are here gathered and as we go out in the world and we talk about the benefits um, of these medicines and these substances, it's also really important for us to have a very balanced perspective on um, some of the risks that are that are inherently involved in any exploration of consciousness and that we have protocols and ways and techniques and tools that we work together as a community to develop in order to address those inherent um, risks or challenges that may come up for people. So uh, as I said before, we are the harm reduction department of MAPS and uh, Peer support is a portion, a very subset of the pie of harm reduction. And here is a definition of harm reduction put forth by the Harm Reduction Coalition. So harm reduction is a set of strategies and ideas aimed at reducing negative consequences associated with drug use. Uh, it increases knowledge and creates well-informed conscious communities and engages people in conversations about drug use. 
this can be a difficult thing to do in a time of prohibition and criminalization. So I was having um, a recognition recently that I think in harm reduction we're doing a couple of things. One is we're helping to reduce the, the risks or the harms associated with substance use and the other is that we're working to actually reduce the harms caused by the drug war because a lot of the situations and the ways that these um, challenging psychedelic situations are dealt with are a result of the drug war and I will be talking about that a bit more in a moment. Peer support is a subset of harm reduction. So um, harm reduction is this big umbrella that includes all kinds of psychoactive substances. And it's not just related to substances. It's also related to things like sex education. And it's essentially a form of looking at how we deal with substance use and saying, all right, um, the prohibitionist model is not working. It's failing us in many ways. So what's a new model? Peer support, and specifically peer support as it relates to psychedelic and psychoactive substances, uh, increases our knowledge about psychedelics and their effects and helps people understand how to assist others. This is obviously a challenge in a society that has been hell-bent on decreasing knowledge and keeping research and um, education around drugs really tightly controlled. So. Uh, the peer support model really is an alternative to this old, um, this old model. And uh, we need to have more compassionate interventions for people who to choose to use substances. And in the more extreme situations, restraint or sedation or arrest are most often unnecessary and can cause further harm and trauma. So I think that the peer support model addresses, um, you know, really helping people understand because I believe that a lot of the ways that these situations are dealt with are a result of, A, the stigma related to psychedelics and to drug users, and so how people, um, paramedics or police officers or just general public deals with someone having a challenging experience, psychedelic or otherwise, is related to stigma around psychedelics and is also related to a lack of understanding um, around how they work. And so we think that knowledge is power. And if you can teach people not to fear these substances, but to better understand them and their effects, that they'll be able to better interface with people in those experiences, which is increasingly important as we look forward to a time of um, you know, increased decriminalization and or medicalization. So peer support impact, uh, we've seen that the work that we do at festivals, that it relieves burden from other emergency service departments, and uh, that psychological services are being seen as just as important as medical services, because just because you can't often see what's going on for someone internally and emotionally doesn't mean that those wounds or those challenges aren't happening for people. And I want to preface this by saying that while we, do it, while we do this model at events and festivals, this is far beyond just what we do there. And we really see the event um, as a microcosm for how we can better interact and engage with emergency service professionals uh, out in society and not just in the event community. So um, while our experiment, so to speak, has been within events and festivals, and we believe that the things that we found and learned and discovered have far-reaching implications beyond festival environments. So. Um, Zendo Project started in 2012 at Burning Man. MAPS has actually been doing harm reduction work since the early 2000s at Burning Man and at other events across the world, including Boom Festival in Portugal, uh, Shambhala in Canada, and other smaller events. But Zendo Project, as it is currently named, um, was birthed at Burning Man in 2012. And over the past seven years, we have seen over a sorry, seen over 6,000 guests, over a dozen events that we have attended. That's a lot of people <laughs> that have come and received our services, and. I feel, um, as I do this work, 
So I'm, a, I'm also a clinician. I, work, I worked on the phase two, and I currently am a therapist on the phase three MDMA PTSD trials in Boulder. And it's really wonderful to be able to experience working in both the clinical environment and the recreational environment. And one thing that I really enjoy about working in the recreational environment is the number of people uh, that we're able to help and the level of very um, tangible impact that I'm able to see on people's lives, which as a clinician can sometimes feel a little slow, especially as we're doing research and only able to see a certain amount of people over a, a period of time. We've also trained thousands of volunteers um, in our approach and in our model, and our approach has been having a worldwide outreach. There are many organizations that have blossomed over the past decade that have been formed and informed by our model of people who come and volunteer with the Zendo Project, people in other cities and countries who see what we're doing, use our open source training manual to help to train their communities and to form similar organizations organizations in their regions and areas. We're a decentralized model. We're not a branch model. So our intention is not to have Zendos out in all the festivals in the world, but it's actually to help empower communities to create um, similar organizations in their, in their uh, towns and communities. So um, a bit about understanding challenging psychedelic experiences. This statement here, Humphrey Osman, um, English psychiatrist and psychedelic researcher. To fathom hell or sore angelic, just take a pinch of psychedelic. So we're going to be talking about recreational environments today. Uh, this is where most people are taking psychedelics right now. So people are taking psychedelics in ceremony and in therapy, whether it's underground or in uh, legal medical contexts. But the vast majority of people are taking psychedelics in recreational um, places. And this is, uh, as we've seen it, increasing over the past decade as this renaissance, as this wave of psychedelic exploration and learning takes place. More and more people are exploring, um, as Rick shared yesterday, uh, you know, when the, when the grandparents are starting to explore, that means that you're probably um, in a, uh, a moment, a, a way of, of uh, pioneering a new, a new way. Um, so in recreational environments, whether that's at a festival or in a home or a party or just out wherever, um, some common expectations of psychedelics, especially for people who are new to the experience, are that they're fun, connecting, enjoyable, transcendent, euphoric. They can be these things. They can also be other things. Um, in a therapeutic or ceremonial context, it's understood and expected that difficulty is part of that experience. In fact, facing the things that arise that are catalyzed by the psychedelic as part of the intention of these settings so that these things can come up and be brought into the therapeutic or the ceremonial relationship and be healed. And so um, accessing and processing memories um, or traumas are a mechanism through which individuals are able to, and communities are able to heal. When we take a psychedelic, the subconscious mind, those things that we have repressed, denied, or rejected about ourselves, as well as the impacts of our past traumas, come to the light. And when faced with these parts of ourselves, we may experience fear, anxiety, or disorientation. Um, while psychedelics can absolutely be transformational in certain contexts and settings, it requires a supportive environment to be able to surrender to the more challenging aspects that come up with psychedelics. So often what we see in the Zendo is that somebody comes up against something internally, it arises, they're not quite sure what to do with it, it's not what they were expecting, it wasn't their intention at the tipper show to all of a sudden be faced with their childhood trauma, their friends don't know what's going on, um, they're not in that supportive space and all of a sudden the challenge gets even more escalated and more difficult because they don't feel like they're in a safe place to be able to, to, to process that. So that's where we come in and organizations like us and people who train um, in peer support are able to create a safe container in a recreational environment to help um, people look and work with these things and be with these things and feel safe and keep the situation from escalating even further. 
So who is peer support for? This guy. <laughs> So this is Stewie. Um, he's tripping balls. He's trying to sell his shirt for a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, he's really high, but he's he is, um, he's also standing, doing well. Got big pupils, hanging out at a dead show. Um, the peer support is for emotionally challenged, psycho-spiritually challenged people, medically stable and psychiatrically stable people. So the model that we use, that we train our volunteers in, is a peer support model. It's not therapy. Um, and we believe that the peer support model has um, support really far-reaching implications, and I'll be talking about that a little bit later. But it's really important to keep in mind that peer support isn't for everybody, um, that some situations do require an increased level of care, um, and that these are some of the necessary, uh, our scope of practice is, is not, you know, uh, we, someone has to be stable uh, medically and psychologically. And... Um, we work with people who are experiencing uh, difficult experiences related to a substance or just a personal crisis not related to substance use. Um, we don't provide medical care or treatment, clinical interventions, mental health services, or physical restraint or sedation. So we consider ourselves an alternative to restraint or sedation, and we've seen and it's been demonstrated that our model increases the number of restraints and sedations at events. Ethics is a cornerstone of the work that we do. I'm just going to very briefly touch on our model today. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but um, at the end I'll share more about how you can continue to dive into this work. We provide a consistent level of compassionate care by embracing ethical, impeccable, sorry, impeccable ethical standards. Someone on psychedelics is in a vulnerable state and they must be treated with care and dignity. In our, in our treatment manual and in our training, we really have a lot of ethical guidelines for our sitters that really look at confidentiality, focus on consent um, with all uh, techniques and um, ways of engaging with a guest. And we really want to treat individuals with the care that you would want for yourself and your own community and um, train our volunteers to act with integrity on, on many levels. So I'm going to be talking just very briefly about our principles of peer support. These are four principles that we have found help to uh, organize and structure the work that we do. So um, the work that the Zendo Project does is based upon many, many years and knowledge and wisdom that's built over years of everything from um, psychedelic therapists in the 60s, underground therapists, um, people who have worked uh, in doing harm reduction over the years, peer support over the years at many events all around the world hog farmers at, at Woodstock, the Grateful Dead parking lot medics. We're not the first to be doing this work in the world, but we believe that our model synthesizes a lot of this wisdom, and um, we've also had uh, you know, people who've worked with us over the years who come from more in indigenous and shamanic practices. So the peer support model is something that we have developed from many different streams of knowledge and wisdom, and it's been a co-creative process and it continues to be a co-creative process. So these four pillars are um, usually any technique or tool that we use falls under one of these four pillars. Safe space, sitting not guiding, talking through not down, and difficult is not the same as bad. I'm just going to briefly look into these each. Um, so safe space... Safety and feeling safe allows us to move past stuck places. Being a calm, grounded, and compassionate individual goes a long way in helping someone feel safe. We approach our guests with kindness and openness and create an environment of acceptance and compassion. We let people know that they are in a safe place and that their experience is welcome. We invite them to share their experience, but we make no expectations that they do so. We sometimes reframe their experience or help them reframe their experience, um, especially limiting or stuck belief systems, but we do not deny a person's reality or experience. 
When possible, especially when we have a Zendo space, we move people to a quiet space away from distractions so that they can have a minimal um, input. Our second principle is sitting and not guiding. In this principle, we follow what we talked about yesterday in a few of the talks around following the inner guide, the inner wisdom. As the sitter, we avoid choosing the direction of the process and encourage them to connect with their own inner wisdom. We believe that people know what they need and what is best for them, even if they don't know how to express it. In those cases, we encourage and support expression. We, words can sometimes confuse or get in the way. We use them sparingly unless someone wants to engage in dialogue with us. We don't analyze their experience. We rather listen with an open mind and heart. And we ask questions that help the individual deepen into their experience. We allow them to come to their own insights and conclusions. We provide our own perspectives, but focus on helping them to th come to their own heart, and their own truth. And we let go of our agenda and outcome and not get ahead of the process. A third principle is talking through and not down. Um, there's really no down to psychedelic journey besides time. We're not trying to stop the ride, just help them get through until it is over. And we become the grounded energy that helps them transition to a less distressed state. We help them turn into, toward the mouth of the dragon rather than away from it, invite them to trust the process, validate thoughts and emotions, and trust what's showing up. We don't in invalidate or dismiss a perceived reality. We don't rush the experience, try to fix a scenario, or provide solutions. We remain in a place of beginner's mind, which I think is really fitting to our name of the Zendo Project. I see the Zendo as, a, as actually, and sitting for others, as a, play, as a meditative practice of being as most present as possible with someone's experience and being open and having an open mind, beginner's mind. Our last principle, difficult is not the same as bad. We believe that difficult experiences can be our most valuable experiences, and that however challenging a situation may seem, that being a calm, grounded presence can really help someone who is struggling. Um, we remind people that this difficult experience might be an opportunity for themselves um, to uh, emerge from the experience with new insights and understandings. Um, beyond Black Rock, so Black Rock City, who here has been to Black Rock City? Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't, we'll expect to see you there this next year, next August. Maybe volunteering with the Zendo, maybe just having experience. Um, so we go to this place every year called Black Rock City, a city of 70,000 people out in the desert. It's only one of the events that we do. Beyond what we do at festivals, we see that um, as peer support providers, we have a unique opportunity to create a model of peer support um, that helps prevent further traumatization and shift mainstream stigma around psychedelics. We believe that the peer support model is applicable to many different situations, things that we talked about today and yesterday, um, as an adjunct to medicalization, decriminalization, and therapy. We believe that the peer support model Model, learning how to um, be in community and care for our community is really necessary and at this time really crucial. What we see is a lot of people taking what they've learned through Zender Project trainings and teachings and bringing those out into the community in their own way. Even if they don't create similar organizations, just bringing their heart and this knowledge to the way that they interact with others in the world. Um, we often witness people accessing deep trauma and not having a safe container to process it in, and we believe that it's important to create all kinds of containers for this processing, therapeutic, ceremonial, medical, medical containers, peer support containers. Uh, we believe that the harm reduction model is a crucial component to improving mental health system in our society, and that the more that we stigmatize um, drug users and the more that we treat them as criminals and treat them as non-humans and um, treat them in inhumane ways in addressing these situations, um, the more harm we're doing to our society. And so we believe that harm reduction is an anecdote to this. 
and we believe that we want to create a unique model for compassionate care, not just for psychedelic crises, but for challenging situations of all kinds, including just being alive at this moment in time. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the Zendo Project does, has done trainings at over a dozen major cities. Don't worry, Austin, we're coming to you soon. <laughs> um, our trainings... <laughs> Um, so we'll, I'll show you the, the website on our last slide. Um, we're developing our, our 2020 training schedule right now, and um, we want to continue to go to major cities in the U.S. and also um, all around the world. Um, we've developed peer support services at two other regional Burning Man events, and as I said earlier, we've done dozens of other events. Um, we're working on an advanced grass, grassroots training program now that helps uh, organizations who've developed similar uh, models uh, and help them by providing them with consultation services, further advanced training, and helping them learn how to interface with other emergency service professionals. We're also providing specific private trainings to venues, emergency service professionals, officers, uh, medics, mental health professionals. Um, we've developed an online training right now and um, are currently going to be releasing that to, or are shortly going to be releasing that to the public. We provide consultations to all kinds of of different organizations, and we're really focused on accessibility and inclusion and bringing this model to as many marginalized communities as possible as part of our strategic plan and goal for 2020. To learn more about the Zendo Project, you can visit us on zendoproject.org. I like this little dandelion because that's how I feel like our work is, as we come together and we learn together as a community of not just therapists, um, not just activists, um, not just uh, you know people from all different walks of life come and volunteer for the Zendo, and we all come together and we, we learn things and then take those out in our community and share them in our own unique ways. Our tagline is creating a community of compassionate care. So if you want to get more involved in this community by volunteering, um, by sponsoring, by uh, being a, a host for a training, there's lots of ways that you can get involved. Please visit our website so that you can learn more. Um, I see I have 50 seconds left. Do I have time for like one question? All right, um, one question. <laughs> Okay, I'll be quick. I'm right here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Thanks for your talk. Um, yeah, I have actually volunteered for Zendo in the past a few times, and my quick question was, last year I had a really um, interesting experience sitting for a guest who is deaf, so for me that was a really uh, big roadblock for me, and so I'm wondering if there's a platform that Zendo has created um, to be able to share experiences that we've had as sitters and be able to learn from each other. Like Through that I learned, you know, even just using an app and being able to talk to her through that, or good eye communication with her, um, and to see maybe if someone said something that, uh, you know, sent someone into a, a worse experience, and le learning from them, and being able to just have that platform to communicate, and then all become, you know, better sitters, and not just for Zendo, but in peer support in general, like you were saying. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, we've worked with that um, with both our guests and our sitters, um, trying to accommodate um, uh, so many people's lived experience, um, and and um, for that specific situation. So we have a supervision kind of process where you can go to shift leads and supervisors. And then also what we're doing right now is working on after every event, we have integration, online integration circles where people can come and share their experience and get some feedback from their supervisors. Um, and we're continuing to try to improve the model of post-event integration and connecting people in their communities to help learn from each other. So that's a wonderful example that you're bringing up and thank you for, for bringing that. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.